Hola, bon dia, Manson here with the Good Morning Portugal show. Tea incoming, look at that. Uh, she's got some clothes on this morning, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, excellent, a nice cup of tea, excellent, we're all ready to go. That threw me a little bit, as you can probably tell. Um, Nick Steinman is here this morning, bon dia de Faragudo. Um, thank goodness there are people um, in the Algarve at the moment, which is where Faragudo is, I believe. Uh, bon dia todos de Amsterdam from Matthias, uh, obviously in Amsterdam, uh, as, as the comments suggest. Stephen Wells, bon dia to you, my friend, in the UK. And Jeff Owen is here as well. Good morning, Jeff. Excellent attendance this week, I have to say. Sonia G is here, who I always imagined to be like um, a singer. Sonia G, bon dia to you. Victoria, Atlanta, Georgia, bon dia de push, push, oh, river. Bon dia, Pashoes Lindas. That's what I meant to say from Atlanta. Uh, from Yorkshire, it was Yorkshire Day. We didn't celebrate it properly, I don't think. There's still time, though, I think, to maybe um, have a very, um, um, a, a very sort of conservative. A portion of fish and chips and maybe a small glass of beer in honour of Yorkshire Day. Uh, greetings from a sunny Harrogate where Yorkshire black puddings and Yorkshire puddings aren't a sweet course. Yes, don't you Americans go asking for Yorkshire pudding thinking it's a dessert. I mean, it's not the end of the world, of course. Anna Olsen is here as well. Uh, bon dia to you. Um, have we seen Michael uh, since the footy? Oh, <laughs> He might, he might, he may or may not want to join us. Now you've said that he's waiting. He's, he's, he's I'm, I'm sure he's thinking about what he's going to say about the football, and was wondering if anybody was going to bring that up. Bon dia to us from Jim White in Baltimore. Jacqueline CDM, uh, most wonderful photograph from you to be shown that sums up August, I think, in Portugal. And just finally for now, um, Elra's here, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Hello to you, uh, Elra. Uh, have we seen Michael since the footy? No, we haven't. And here he is now to to take the responsibility of England not willing. The Euros. Yeah. Oh, good morning, Portugal show now. Good. <laughs> How are good you? Morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's it going, mate? You're right. I'm very well. Very well. And you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I was actually <clears throat> going to suggest we didn't talk about for once. <laughs> we didn't talk about the football or COVID for the whole hour. So if we can if we uh, can do that. I think it would be um, it would be because uh, uh, I think everyone's bored of us talking about the same things probably. So. For the audience, for the audience. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Okay. Well, I mean, it was a good effort. Good effort, England. No, it was. Um, yeah, it was a good effort. Yeah, you can't, yeah. I mean, you can't, um, you can't, uh, you know, you get to five kicks from winning it, then you've got yeah, to save play. Exactly. And one way of looking at it, I mean, yeah, you're right. We shouldn't talk about football or COVID. And we were maybe last comment now. And I'm just realising how much I'm looking like Wayne Rooney this morning. Um, but um, uh, the, the thing about football, of course, is, is in, in a match, someone's got to lose. But if you think about um, a championship... Yeah, unless you're a high jumper, apparently, in which case you can just decide to share victory. Is that right? Is that, what's, is that, is that an did, Olympic did reference? Did you, hear, did you hear about that? No, I didn't. This sounds like an inspirational story. Well, okay, okay. Well, this is where this controversy, mate. So basically, what happened was there was the the high jumping event in the athletics final, yeah. And um, a guy from Qatar and a guy from Italy who happened to be really good mates. Um, basically, neither of them could clear the final um, jump, but they were the best two in the competition at that point. So they had the option of either doing a jump off or sharing the gold, and they decided to share the gold. So some people think it's a great act of sportsmanship. Other people like me think, well, you're just uh, uh, reducing your <laughs> probability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Instead of having a 50% probability of winning gold, you have a 100% probability. So, but, you know, imagine... Imagine England and Italy, instead of having a penalty shootout, just deciding, well, we'll just, we'll just share it. Can you imagine it? There'd, be, there'd have been a riot in Wembley if yeah. they had done that. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, incredible. Well, well, and yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say about football. And in, in, how many teams took part in the, I mean, not the early stages, but in the championship championship itself, the Euros 2020-21, how many teams were in it at the start? 24. Now, 24 that's, 20, that's 23 losers, isn't it, effectively? Yeah. That, yeah. That is, yeah. If you look at it that way, I mean, it's it's a wonder, that it, it, or it's and no wonder. Qual qualifying before as well, right? So, yeah. so you have so, to qualify. So the teams like Lich so teams like Liechtenstein can't get in, you know. So apologies to anyone who's from Liechtenstein if they're watching. It's a great <laughs> yes. country, and it will be. It will be absolutely beautiful place. Yeah. Okay, a um, lot of people pleased to see you here, uh, and it is amazing um, how the months uh, go round and round. 
um, so quickly, um, as was said. Um, my mum made Yorkshire pudding, <laughs> says Victoria. I'm glad to hear it. Nice. I, hope, I hope she didn't serve it with Salisbury steak. Um, as because uh, uh, I think Americans and Canadians think that's a traditional English thing as well. Uh, oh, really? we've not we've not mentioned Salisbury steak for a little while, but there you go. Um, maybe COVID football and Salisbury steak. Uh, we that sounds mention. good. That sounds good to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> From, from Andrew. Um, morning to you, mate. Uh, James, bon dia from a sunny Skipton, North Yorkshire. Great bon dia, James. Oh, the Olympics has gone back to primary school. Everyone's a winner. Oh, that's edgy. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. My point exactly. Let's give everyone a wooden spoon for participating. Because I, I did think when you said it, I thought it's going to be one of those inspirational memes. You know, a, 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 you know, on Facebook, it opens up and there's some. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's like, how some people have interpreted it. That's how some people... So, you know, I think fair play, right? I mean, it's within the rules to do that, actually, within the... So you can you can decide to split the goal instead of having a jump off. But the fact that they're good mates, they were playing PlayStation together the night before the final, it's a bit suspect, like, mm, OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we probably shouldn't go there anymore. We'll get no, no. I, think it, I think it's a fascinating thing because it reminds me of, you know, when you do when it opens up and there is that slightly uh, slow motion and a little bit of chariots of fire kind of uh, and or piano music in the background and i think um there was a guy wasn't there who thought he'd won or thought he had crossed the line um and he it was noticed by his runner-up literally in in, the, in a marathon i think that he hadn't yeah. crossed the line yet yeah. and he he helped he he pointed that out didn't he, he could have won himself yeah. he could have stolen victory at that point by yeah. by taking advantage of of, of yeah. the the guy not crossing the line. But that, but that, see, that to me is sportsmanship because it would be the same thing. If one of the guys had got injured and couldn't compete, then I would have respected them to say, do you know what, mate? Yeah, we yeah. both deserve it. Fair enough. But it's just the fact they couldn't be bothered to finish the event, Yeah, <laughs> basically, yeah. Uh, because yeah. there was a risk that they wouldn't win gold. And, and obviously, you know, in history, they'll both be remembered as gold winners. And there's a lot yeah. of money that they'll get from the prestige, the marketing of being it, and all the adverts they'll be able to do. So, you know, commercially, it's it made sense for them to do that. But, you know, uh, who knows you, how you react in a situation like that as well, I guess. You train for well, four years. True. And it would depend, obviously, on... I mean, I, haven't, I don't think I've seen a single thing from the Olympics, except when it's been... Tagged I, I haven't either, mate. It's just stuff I've been reading. I haven't watched a single second of it, to be honest. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, it does depend on where, where the event is taking place, because if it had been in somewhere a little bit, if it, if it hadn't been in the pandemic time um, with restrictions and it had been in a more expressive country, the crowd might have uh, might have responded to that or it might mm -hmm. never have happened. But you're not yeah. going to get much booing in Japan, are you, I don't suppose? Uh, I guess not. I mean, it's interesting. There's a guy I read about online who's like this this Japanese uh, fan. He's obsessed with the Olympics. He's been to like the last five Olympics, and he was so excited that his country were hosting it. And he bought he bought tickets for nearly every event. Like he was trying to break the record of like the most events having ever been as a spectator in Olympics, like 157 or something crazy like that. And he was gut he spent about 25 grand. Obviously, he got his money back. But he was devastated not to go. So I think, um, I mean, I remember 2012 in London, I managed to get tickets for the foot, the men's football final at Wembley between Brazil and Mexico, and that was amazing. Um, so it is, it is a special thing, and it's a shame that people can't, can't yeah, go. And, um, I yeah. mean, the Japanese must have lost a lot of money uh, yes. uh, yeah. on that, um, and having to delay it a year as well. So, yep. yeah, it's yep. unfortunate. Yep. It's unfortunate. <laughs> so bringing things back to uh, Portugal, if we might, because yes, we often I, I, no, 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 it's, I'm not, I'm not pulling you up on that. It's, it's just you know, it's the Good Morning Portugal show from Expats Portugal. I, yeah. I was thinking, what's, well, what's the angle here? I think Portugal are doing fairly well from what I have been able to glean, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, when is when will Portugal host the Olympics? Probably sharing it with Spain, maybe. I don't know if that would be a, um, if that's. That, that could happen, couldn't it? Um, because you could argue that uh, Portugal, well, don't, you know, maybe after the, the earlier European football stuff. Yes, I mean it's a big, it's a big expense because you yeah. have to have you have to have the infrastructure for all the events, and then you've got the um, you've got the legacy uh, issue after that. So, for example, when um, when Portugal hosted the Euros back in two thousand and four, they had to build. Uh, a few stadiums because you need to have like a minimum requirement of locations, right? So some of those stadiums aren't in, aren't being used. So for example, in Avedo, they have a thirty-five thousand seater stadium. 
yes. uh, that they'll use a couple of times a year because uh, the local team is in like the third division in Portugal and could never afford to run the stadium, especially now, right? So yeah. um, the problem you have is, all right, you're going to build all this infrastructure and then leave it, but what's the what's the legacy of that? So what are you going to do with all of that investment afterwards? And I think yeah. in the example of London, 2012, and I think Barcelona, 92, for those people that remember what Barcelona was like before the 92 Olympics, I mean, it wasn't uh, the, the greatest uh, city that it is now, but they 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 rebuilt the city, and the same with London. I mean, if you've been to Stratford uh, before twenty, well, I lived there in two thousand and seven. If you if you've been to Stratford then, compared to what it is now, I mean, you know, it's incredible. So they you know they purposely chose Newham because it was one of the poorer boroughs in London. Yeah. So if if it if it adds value and creates a legacy, and yeah, maybe for Portugal they could they could share it with Spain. I mean, it's a wonderful event. Uh, the only worry I'd have is doing it in August. Would any Portuguese actually be in Lisbon to watch it? They'd probably all be at the old guard on the beach. That's so right. You'd have to factor that in, wouldn't you, for sure? Yeah. Um, and that gives me a lovely moment to share this uh, photograph from Jacqueline CDM this morning. She's great, a great photographer, and we, and we do we are able to share a, a photograph from her occasionally. But this, to me, that she posted yesterday, this is this is uh, Portugal in August. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah, that fantastic. Yeah. That's from the Silver yeah. Coast yesterday, and nice. that's what that's what a lot of people want to see at the moment. I mean, it is absent of a few people, to be fair, and that is the problem at the moment, of course. Yeah, you know, I, I think I, the, I, the Algarve's really full at the moment, mate. People have told so me. Um, yeah, but you know, this is kind of like always my recommendation to people is of I course. always say avo avoid the Algarve in August because it's expensive and lots of people and. Um, Go at a different time of the year, and in August, come to come to Lisbon. But especially where I live, I'm on the coast. There's nobody. I went to the beach. I went to Caracavelos Beach Saturday morning. There was nobody there. Uh, so yeah, it's it's you lovely. It. So, I definitely recommend this this part in August because just ev everyone's gone to the Algarve. So here we have the beaches for ourselves. I think that's a very good tip, and this that's why we have Michael Heron here every first Wednesday of the month. Ask anything about Portugal, and you get some gold like that. That is a really good way of doing it, because people can be creatures of habit, can't they, individually and uh, nationally, and that's what I think is going on. There is, a, there is um, that has been noted, you know, that a lot of Portuguese people, I mean, a lot of our associates are down there. Gilda's down there at the moment. We spoke to Nunu yesterday from Windsor. It's, he phoned in from his holiday. Gilda was going to do the same. They're both down in the Algarve. It's what Portuguese Everyone. People everyone do. mate everyone and you know there's a reason for it right it's beautiful the weather is guaranteed to be warm in the summer it's at least six or seven degrees warmer than the rest of the country but the problem yeah. you have is that the expense and the amount of people that are there obviously you can find quieter parts it's not all you know crazy or whatever um but actually what's interesting is i'm, I'm noticing more and more portuguese uh going to the north so my barber he goes to the north in the summer um and he says you know it's not as hot as the algarve but there's still beautiful beaches and uh, just not as many people so i guess it depends what you what you want if you're going to stay in your hotel or resort then probably <clears throat> you don't care so much but um yeah I've, I've never been a fan in august of the algarve it's just for me it's too crowded interesting okay and uh, of course the, the what, what has been noticed that whilst there are a lot of portuguese people in the algarve um, it's still not 100% occupancy, which we would, would have hoped for by yeah. this time. There, there is a definite lack of foreigners and tourists from outside of Portugal in the Algarve at the moment. And what are we going to do? I was reminded yesterday, you know, thinking about this and the collapse of a major, um, uh, what are they called, a garment manufacturer uh, in Castelo Branco that employs 300 people. And there's a beautiful picture of some of their suits, <coughs> do excuse me, um, with Ronaldo, you know, with Cristiano modelling the suits. Yeah. They make like so many things in Port think So many things are made here, aren't they, in Portugal still? Yes. On, on yes. a scale that doesn't necessarily come to everybody's attention globally. And the, 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 qu the quality as well. Because I, I remember and pe people, who are, people who are Spanish or, or, or have spent time in Spain will, will relate to this. It's that the culture has always been in Spain is that the Spanish will, will cross the border into Portugal uh, to buy things like tablecloths. Um, uh, you know, like everyday things for the house that normally the quality is very poor and expensive, whereas in Portugal it's all made by hand and the quality yeah. is very high and it's, and it's a lot cheaper. So that's always been the, you know, Portugal's always had a manufacturing culture, be it with cork or textiles or, you know, fabric. Shoes, so, shoes. Um, 
Yeah. That's right. And this this place is after Italy, Portugal is the second highest exporter of shoes in Europe. Isn't that amazing? Who who would know that? I mean, yeah, I, I, I didn't know that until I, I came here. And again, great quality, a great cost. Uh, you know, yeah, great so yeah, gentlemen and ladies, if you're going to be, uh, ladies and gentlemen, should I say, if you're going to be uh, shopping in Portugal, shoes is my recommendation because you will find high quality shoes at a fraction of the cost you'd be used to paying at home. I'm, so I'm feeling a, a, a Avon Light Tours coming on, uh, you know, into, yeah. into Lisbon. August, a nice shoe. Oh, I hate and- shopping. I'll be the worst person to take <laughs> someone down Avenida Libertad. When I go Christmas shopping, if I can't do it online, I'll literally get it done in like a couple of hours. I'm just in and out. So I'm literally that- the worst person. <laughs> but I, can, I can point people in the right direction from, from the bar. That's no problem. They want to do oh, it that way. God. I mean, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to try, tie the threads together that we've talked about this morning on Ask Anything About Portugal, the yeah. Michael Herald edition. You know, something like the Olympics. We, we do need to do something um, with yes. a few things that are going on in Portugal. <clears throat> not enough tourists, not enough foreigners. Um, the population's dropping. You've got companies like that that have been around for, for decades uh, in Portugal going to the wall because of presumably because of the pandemic. They may have had underlying issues from before. You know, yeah. you know, maybe it's a, like a, a natural and tragic thing that happens in business. Um, but we need some some sort of uh, regenerative force that yeah. can be uniquely well, well, maybe may, maybe maybe what I there's something I've been thinking about uh, this morning that I wanted to bring up today, which I kind of think maybe ties this together and that yeah. obviously we do we do need this stimulus of of, yeah. of of foreigners whether they're coming in on on, on holiday or, or for extended stays and obviously now with the the d7 visa if you're oh, yeah. not from the eu a lot easier you no longer have to get a golden visa you can come here rent a property for for six months to a year before deciding if you want to stay here permanently and that's the kind of uh stimulus for the economy that's really important but what i'd yeah. always say to anyone considering moving to any country not just to portugal and carl you'll relate to this when you did it uh back in 2017 was it yeah um, yep. is that momentum is really important because yes. it, it seems like a really idealistic thing to do you know you have that dream of oh yeah you know a rainy day in Warsaw or carlisle and you're thinking yeah i want to be in portugal permanently <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to single out those two. Those, that was a Freudian slip. Sorry about that. Northern England or anywhere in England where it rains. A no, lot, uh, the whole of England. Uh, yeah. um, like... <laughs> I always do this. I'm, I, I, I made a gaffe about Hull a couple of months ago, do you remember? Well, you um, need to. Easily done, uh, easily and you know, I think, I think uh, Portuguese make very good shovels as well. If should you need, oh no, you don't need one. You're already doing pretty well. I'm already digging my hole, mate. I'm already digging it. <laughs> 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 um, but no, all, all I was saying is that um, th- there's a lot of admin, and it sounds obvious. Everyone knows that, of course. There's admin that you have to get done, and it can seem quite tedious. But so many people I know will come over and visit to me and say, yeah, I really want to move to Portugal. Da, da, da. They get back home, they go back to their routine, and it doesn't happen. And all I'd say is that if you are serious about doing it, it's really important to have the timeline and your goals and just get it done as quickly as you can. Because before you know it, if you let too much time pass, it will be 10 years and you'll be like, oh, why, have we, why haven't we done it yet? And obviously, it's never, it's never too late. Is that what happened to you? Yeah, well, pretty much. I mean, my first dream to come to Portugal was 2007 at the time, and I came a yeah. couple of a couple of visits and totally loved it and made my mind up then. But life, yeah, life, is. something happened. Yeah. It took 10 years before I actually got made redundant. And <laughs> then I was in a position to really do something about it. So uh, well, That's great, but that's great that you found uh, you found a way to do it no matter the circumstances. And that, and that often happens, doesn't it? And, you know, your, your story is probably not not uncommon um and i guess what you have to be in that position where you really want it and there's like an urgency about it and then it happens but to create that to create that urgency when it's not there is incredibly difficult mate yeah Um, another great point another great classic heron moment don't lose the momentum and the country needs it here as well this is an important this is an important thing. Lots of l- little themes coming together this one. I, li- I like it a lot. Uh, we, and we've got lots of comments and lots of people saying hello, Michael, if you want to Amazing. take a break for a minute. Uh, Michelle, now <clears throat> I've got a, a post-it note with your name on it, Michelle, from our call the other morning. Uh, it's a classic. I don't know if you do this, Michael, but I've got Michelle yeah. and then a note, Maine. Michelle, what were we talking about? What is it I'm meant to get back to you about? That, Amazing. That, 
that just has a single word main with it. If anyone else would like to guess on that, main course, main street, I don't know, or I've written it badly, it might say Maria. I don't know. Michelle, please help me out here. Um, wow. Susan, Susan Renshaw, good morning, everyone, from a cloudy Torres Vedras. Good morning. I must go to Torres Vedras. Good morning, Susan. Have you been to that city? No. Can't no, even me. tell you where it is. No idea where Torres Vedras. No way. It, it, it has a, a, a bit of a, a growing reputation for being a bit of a spiritual place, I believe. Um, oh, wow. Should you be into that sort of thing? Bon dia, Torres, from Norfolk. Oh, good man, Mark. A man after my own heart. There we go, Mark. Good nice lad. one. How's Norfolk looking? Um, the so sound of gobbling never far away um, in Norfolk. Um, th thanks to Bernard Matthews. Uh, um, I have a question. There's, there's, about actually, there's actually a very large Portuguese community in, in Norfolk because of Bernard Matthews. There's something like 40,000. Seriously? Portuguese. Yeah. Who went, who went to be sort of turkey pluckers and, and turkey rearers and that sort of thing? I mean, yeah, I don't like to say it because it sounds a bit, it sounds a bit of a cliche, but yeah, I think so. I think that was the original reason, but there is quite, there is, I mean, there's a very good Portuguese restaurant in Norwich. So if you do live in Norwich or Norfolk, then you should definitely check it out. It's meant to be very good. Testament to the grafting nature of, of, um, of Portuguese people, you know, yeah. go, go around the world, find work and crack on with it. I, I, I love that. About the yeah. Portuguese people. I have a question about the language. In almost all languages, there are class variations. Is there a working class, upper class way of speaking Portuguese? I'm not talking about formal or informal, says Drew. I believe that to be the case. Uh, Michael, what would you say about this? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is the case. And I guess like any like any country, especially when you have regional variables in the accent, some some people might see that as a as a class uh, a class thing, whereas I you know I don't. I see it as a regional variant. So, um, but yeah, I get the point. Yeah, there are there are. Um, different uh, ways of speaking Portuguese that someone Portuguese would probably be able to uh, recognize that. I mean, yeah, there is, there, is, there is obviously a class system in Portugal. I don't think it's as defined as it is in, in the UK, but, but certainly you have, you have families um, that can trace their lineage back to, you know, nobility and, and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, what, what's fascinating about um, Portuguese names is that if someone has a last name, which is the name of a city or a country or a tree or something very sort of specific like that, they tend to be from a Jewish family that had to change their name. Interesting. Uh, when they moved to Portugal, yeah. So if you ever meet anyone with a last name like Lisboa or... Um, Castelo Branco or, uh, you know, anything after the name of a place. Obviously, it could be that their family is from that place as well, so you have to be a bit careful. But generally speaking, they have a, they have a Jewish background. Incredible. Very interesting. And, and, and there's definitely a kind of street, uh, street class kind of language, isn't there? People yes. say pa and fij and they, these yes. sort of – so there's definitely that going on, Drew. I mean, I, I think you will find that. Um, yeah. Important cool. and a good a good access into it. Obviously, come back and check with Philomena with with Mia when we talk to. You know, I think I think like the Portuguese and the Spanish, they they tend to they tend to all be quite informal with friends. Right. Um, so I think there's there's kind of less of that uh, sort of you know, not that we should get into this debate because I think it's a little bit a little bit sensitive. But you know what I mean compared to say the UK where we've had a class system going back have along and it still is very much there right. other people don't want to admit to it um, yeah. but i think in in you know mediterranean countries that that no longer have a monarchy which is all of them except spain there tends to be less of a of a classist uh, society but obviously yeah. it's, it's still here yeah, it is here, but in, a, in operating in a different way. And I, I think watching watching uh, the news and Portuguese TV gives, you, as as it would in any country, gives you a little bit of a look into it, Drew, if you're if that's available to you. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good one for Philomena or for for um, uh, Mia when they come back and we're doing language and culture with those. Great question. Um, did the King of Stupid Things yesterday? Ah, oh, come on, we've all done this, haven't we? Uh, we know some. Uh, put my bag on the roof of the car. Got distracted by something. Got. I'm, I'm interested to know what you got distracted by as well as part of this story. But anyway, uh, got back <laughs> in the car and drove off. In the bag was my wallet with 60 euros, my driving license, passport, and all the other paperwork you need for daily life here. It's a big bag. I also, oh, no. I also have my Samsung, Samsung um, oh, uh, wow. tablet in there. 
And all well, it's, can... worth, it's, it's worth, Gary, if you haven't done it already, it's worth it's worth contacting the local police station because someone might hand it in or at least the, the driving license and passport might turn up if someone's well, decided let's see, to let's see what happens here because I've got a, an image of a breathless Arvo who ran after Gary, after the car, and yeah. caught up with him by the time, you know, he drove 12 kilometres and some absolutely kindly Portuguese person ran the whole distance or got a taxi and followed yeah. the car. And said, here's, we, should here's, definitely follow, we should definitely follow up with Gary because I think there is a better chance than in other countries that he might actually get everything back. Too right, too. Right. I mean, I've no, and that's a thing here. I've noticed that when people, you know, if you're having a coffee in London, if you, if, if I were to be in Heathrow or Euston Station, Kings Cross or whatever, and I wanted to go up to the bar to get a coffee, I would pack everything away and take it with me. Yeah. And you walk into a cafe in Portugal, and someone have laid laid out their sort of cafe desk there with their i with their um you know iMac and a phone and their wallet, and they'll they'll have gone up to the bar to get a coffee. And it's all just left there, isn't it? On on and I you know I've started doing that as well. I think it's really lovely yeah. how, how how honest and laid back people are like yeah. that. So let's we, that's that's a cliffhanger. We need to know what happened there, Gary. Yeah. Um, Stephen Wells hardly competition. Eh? What's he referring to there? I wonder. Probably to the football comment that Stephen made before I came on air, so we can just fly through that. Oh episode. yeah, okay. Yeah. They just, they just, they won't leave it. Pontiac <laughs> run in Kashgarish Market Day today. Oh, that's I bet that's wonderful. Uh, uh, Kashgarish yeah, Market yeah. Day. Uh, I imagine you have something of a market every day in Kashgarish, with that's the population there. But maybe there's a special one uh, on a yeah. Wednesday there, midweek. Uh, Jessica Springsteen didn't make the individual competition. Is this it, what's happening here? Is this another political aspect? I mean, it, this is something that we could talk about more generally, if not specifically. You know how how sport is without a doubt now. You can't you can't talk about sport or enjoy sport without the political dimension being there. And obviously for oh, those. Yeah. Minded. That, that, that's great for people who love politics but it, i mean it's changed so much hasn't it that it, sport was meant to be the refuge from these concerns and it's absolutely and, uh, now not the spot for it and, and, and politicians use it as leverage i mean I, I was watching um i was watching that venezuelan girl win the triple jump and it's i think only the fourth gold medal in history that the venezuela has won at the olympics and literally within 20 minutes the president of venezuela had posted on instagram like congratulations or whatever like you know i don't think that's that's nice but yeah. they all do it don't they they all like boris johnson is a classic one doesn't like football doesn't go to the football england gets the final he turns up with his missus his england shirt over his suit and you know i guess he would have got criticized if he hadn't gone but yeah i don't yeah. I, don't, I don't like it when politicians do that they they try and uh, you know use it as a way to make themselves look more popular yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, there doesn't seem to be much of an escape from it. And, you know, the whole sort of mental health conversation is in there as well at the moment, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just far from watching and enjoying some sport, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, not, it's not that these things aren't important, but, you know, context is. Um, uh, Jessica Springsteen is the daughter of Bruce. Um, and there's that, that, I think that's what that comment may be connected to. Um, okay. uh, sorry, I'm not up to speed on that. And she's in a question. Yeah. Very Maybe special. Not area of, of, of um, oh it's fly season as well being august here that's why i'm gesticulating madly um G dominique Korg says good morning all a standing rib roast there's a euphemism if ever there was one um wow. standing rib roast to go with the yorkshire puds i think there uh, question why is it you must have private health insurance to get your residency but once you got it you don't have to have private health insurance if you choose not to i've got a good answer for that i suspect you have too as well michael uh it's a good question i think it it depends it depends on um on where you're coming from because and, and whether you're eligible but i think now once you become a permanent resident you are eligible for um public health care in portugal i mean what yeah. i'd always recommend yeah I and mean, what i'd always recommend to people because a lot of a lot of a lot of <laughs> wow well you're right there mate you get some <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, I thought, what's going on? Is he got Tourette's and I didn't know about it? He's just started to, to make <laughs> these wild just gesticulating that. actions. <laughs> um, a lot of my clients, when they move from, from overseas, uh, will automatically get um, private health care because, you know, their bank offers it to them when they open an account or whatever, and they, they're under the impression that... Um, you know, it's 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 it, the private healthcare system is better than the public one. And what I would say is that everyone who becomes a resident in Portugal is entitled to get their utente number, which is, gives them access to free healthcare. 
And what I would say is, especially now during the pandemic, it's really important because if you do get COVID or suspected of having COVID and you need to go to hospital, you can't go to a private uh, medical center for that, for, for the reasons of isolation. So you have to go to one of the public hospitals that have been assigned for that. And if you don't have an utente, they won't treat you. So um, it's very important to get that. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you don't need private health insurance unless you're coming from a country where you're not entitled to get it immediately when you move here, i.e. from outside the EU. But uh, my understanding is, is once you've become a permanent resident, if you are paying Social Security contributions as an employee or, or whatever, then you are entitled to it. And my advice would be to always get it because, OK, private medical care is great for, you know, seeing your general practitioner or everyday things or dentistry or whatever. But imagine you needed more serious medical care like surgery or, you know, God forbid, a heart, heart surgery or something like that. Then the cost of doing that privately would be, I mean, you're talking about six figures easily. So okay. um, I would say always get your utente number, which you're entitled to as a resident, and then you've got it there as a backup. By all means, get private health insurance as well, because they're very good offers on that, especially for families. Definitely. It's worth doing it. Um, but always get your utente number, especially now, because with the pandemic, you aren't able to go to a private medical center with COVID. They will not. That's why we love him here. That's why we love him here. He's always got a slightly different angle and something useful to remind everybody about Michael Heron here. Ask anything about Portugal first Wednesday of the month. I think the answer to that question, Paul, and you're absolutely right, Michael. You know, once you are a resident here, you have access. And actually, yeah. even if you're not, um, you know, if you're retired, everyone has access to the public health system. It's, it's yeah. very... It's very, um, you know, you don't have to be paying the contributions necessarily. If you're working, you do, but you don't yes. have to pay them to get to qualify for your med medical health. Yeah, exactly. Thank, thank you for clarifying that, Carl. That's exactly yeah. correct. Yeah. But I think the, the point here with, with why you have to have it when you're getting your residency is because you're not a resident yet and you, they don't want you to be a burden to the to, to the country. And, and I think, you know, from a national's yeah. point of view, it'd be like, well, yeah, you know, fair enough. While, while you're speculative looking to come to Portugal, that will be done at your own cost and not the government's cost. Yeah, or the exactly. People's cost. Uh, but as soon as you are one of the people, you get the benefit of the people. So I, I think that's the reason, Paul. Um, and also, I mean, thankfully, it's not like you're applying for residency in America where the he private health insurance premiums to do that will be extortionate. Yes. And, and you, you yes. say, you know, it's good value, Michael, here. It, it's what some people leave as a tip in America is what they can get their, their health insurance for monthly here. So Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, for, for a family of four, two adults, two children, like you could easily get the whole family insured for around 100 and. 30 140 euros a month yeah. um i mean i'm sure you've done uh, programs on this before so i'm not going to go into too much detail about it but what i would say is the only thing to bear in mind is that in portugal most private uh, medical insurances aren't fully covered like they are yeah. in other countries so you will have to pay a little bit when you have a consultation but it's minimal yes um, absolutely absolutely yeah. right well, yeah nunu is our man and i actually we, i need to know yeah yeah nunu is great and, he, and obviously he'll be he'll be a good person for you for your clients to speak to lovely bloke yeah. uh, he's, he's done the family health and he's done macar recently as well so yeah nice. he, uh, and he's a great he's a good egg and we, he's, we, he's part of the scouting movement which we've never talked about here in portugal which oh, is very wow. And he's going to be reporting like Bear grills from a scout camp next time he phones in in September. Well, well, I have a quick confession to make, mate. I was uh, I was a beaver, a cub, a scout, a sea scout, and adventurer. So I did the full journey. Check, uh, yes, are you probably still got bits of your uniform around for those special occasions? No, no. no. Okay, all right. when your <laughs> wife when your wife asks you to dress up like that, um, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nunu might be able to offer you something. Anyway, my OMG, I, had, I hope a good Samaritan will return you. That's an image, isn't it? We'll return wow. you, your document, <laughs> Donna Maxine Bondia from Maxine. Hey. Hey. <laughs> this, that's a tricky question. Oh, that, that is a tricky question. I guess news pivots are a good example of proper language. Yes, exactly. Uh, people of New Lisbon also think the way language is spoken there is correct, though I wouldn't say that. Well, of course they would, wouldn't they? The old lettuce munchers that, of Lisbon. Exactly compared to the tripe eaters of, of, of Porto. I mean, that, that tells you a lot already, doesn't it? That the, the people of Lisbon are associated with lettuce and the people of, of Porto are associated with tripe. That, that is the same a, in every country, isn't it? It's like London yeah. versus, like Lisbon, London or Madrid, yeah. uh, or Paris versus yeah. the rest of the country, you know? And uh, people from the capital assume that's the only incorrect way of speaking. And obviously we all know that's not, not the case. 
Well, I think Porto, I liken Porto to Manchester, you know, from an English UK perspective. And yeah. because, you know, Manchester, like Porto, you know, I can imagine <laughs> if, if people are, people in Porto are effing and Jeff in every other word by their own admission as well. So it's, it's yeah. funny how these are transferable sort of stereotypes as well. <laughs> we have black pudding. I mean, Portugal does a black pudding. It does every kind of shade of every every color on the spectrum of sausage in Portugal, for sure. And you can get black pudding here. And it was a full English that Susan enjoyed that she made herself, uh, brought home the bacon, literally. Uh, oh, no, bought the bacon in Keldash. Not <laughs> Didn't bring it home from UK. Uh, bacon from Keldash Derenia. There's a little tip that some people will be glad to hear. Delicious. Uh, By the I'm way, if anyone, if anyone can tell me where to get a decent full English breakfast in the Lisbon, Tagus area, I'd be very interested to know that because I'm yet to oh. find one. Oh, there's so a challenge. There's a if challenge. I reverse, if I can reverse the role a little bit and if the audience can help me out on that, that'd be fantastic. Curveball. Nice one. Uh, have, have you been to the fish and chip shop, which has had a reprieve? No. There is there was a fish and chip shop that was that we, we reported was sadly closing. Very excellent reputation, and they've managed to stay open. So anyone in Lisbon who who liked the oh, I really? think it's the fish and chip shop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, nice. They've managed to weather the storm, which is great. Robert Ryan, um, and of course, you know, the affinity between uh, England and Portugal around fish and chips being celebrated in that very uh, dining experience. Uh, morning from Cornwall, from Robert Mate, Ryan. If it's, it's open, I'm going there literally in two hours. I'm not even going. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say the same for a draw in boxing, says James? That's interesting. Oh, see, yeah. See, that, see that's different because they've been battering each other for 12 rounds, probably. Yeah. Um, and I think I think you know I think there are exceptions to that, right? It's the same if there's a photo finish in a race. So maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. It was just no, the, the, ne the nepotism point. of them being friends. That yeah, maybe you, you, yeah, yeah. I think it, it, I think it's the, the sort of contrived nature of it, possibly that you're pointing to. A little bit cynical, perhaps. Rather, if they than hadn't been mates, would they have done that? Probably not. Yeah. I think they'd yeah. not. Do you know what, mate? F off. Let's 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 go into one of us wins the gold. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm taking the gold home, not you. Like, I don't care if they have to delay the opening ceremony till next week. We're going to stay here and jump it off until one of us doesn't, you know, one of us loses. That would be my attitude. Jump it off. Um, Amazing. Um, Antonio, <laughs> I want to hear from you. Um, that, that, good point, so James. And James says somewhere else as well that, of course, that uh, it's a city that hosts the Olympics, not a country. Well said. Very good uh, point. Uh, and Very so it would, it would have to be Lisbon or Porto, wouldn't it? Or the Algarve, you know, it, it, that'd be fascinating. Uh, there is, uh, although the Algarve I know isn't a city, there is a formal class as well as a familiar and working language. Context and hierarchy yeah. also factor in. So it's yeah. complicated. Um, it doubt is. Portugal could afford to host it. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Yeah, and, and James says there is a city, uh, not a country. Um, after retracting, retracing, uh, not retracting after retracing my route and not finding anything. Oh, I made a trip to the GNR to report it, and Linda went home. Wife Linda, uh, while she was there, two guys turned up and asked if her son was home. Lol, because <laughs> because they found his bag five kilometers away. Isn't that amazing? It was so the, the, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Then <laughs> yes, it was a, it was it was a bit beaten up, but everything was there and working. God bless you, Portugal. Well, we didn't, did, did we suspect that? Didn't we suspect Is there a that? better yeah. advocate for this amazing country than that kind of culture we have with that spirit of community and how safe it is and how little crime it is and the fact that, you know, that would never happen in <laughs> other parts of the world. I mean, you'd never see it again. Well, but that said, I mean, you know, I've done it. I, 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 and I think you're right, generally speaking. And, and you know, given the, the, the way things are in the world as well, you you know, some, some people might see that as a little bit of a, a godsend, mightn't they? Uh, you know, that they found 60 euros at the moment, especially if they were starving hungry or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I found a, a wallet and 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 um, <laughs> and, and, and phone, phone the people up. You know, you, there are individuals who will do this wherever they are in the world, aren't there? Uh, yeah. But but I think the point you're making is that this is a national characteristic, isn't it? That's the national expectation, I think, of good. Yeah, behavior. I mean, look, there, are th there are thieves everywhere, right? But I would say here in general, I mean, you look at, <laughs> yeah, you look, you look at crime rate in Portugal, and it's one of the lowest in the world. Yeah. Well, let's bring on this. Um, thank you, Gary, for that, for, for, for uh, resolving that tension for us there. So good to hear. And they drove to your house by the sound of it. Uh, Portugal, fifth best country to live comfortably in retirement for wealthy foreigners. There you go. <laughs> 
that well that, yeah um, you'd have to drill a bit deeper into that because i, I guess yeah. that makes it easier to retire anywhere if you're a wealthy foreigner but it's you know it's, yeah. this is all good u.s ranking has put portugal in fifth place for the best countries to comfortably retire to as long of course as people are foreign and on healthy pensions yes nice little twist there natasha don that we've come to expect from you um, national spending his or her retirement in portugal is more than likely to be strapped for cash a national this is and still working on the side absolutely and that's what we need to address for sure um but taking the rankings on face value she says portugal comes behind spain australia new zealand and switzerland so interesting there another another yeah I mean, again it, it again it depends where you're living in the country because i'd argue that there are parts of portugal that are cheaper than parts of spain and if you don't have a mortgage if you've got uh retirement income you know a couple can afford to live comfortably off a relatively small amount it just depends what your lifestyle is and what what kind of you know what kind of um expenses you have but i would say there are regional differences you know you can't compare living in downtown lisbon to you know where jerry lives right indeed absolutely right and um portugal shrinking population let me put this on as well because it's another thing i think we should bring into the conversation this morning portugal shrinking population roughly 50 percent live in just 31 municipalities that is an interesting sort of demographic, cultural, sociological shift, isn't it? And yeah. another thing, another thing that foreigners might be able to help with in spreading the, you know, this is a globalized phenomenon, isn't it? People moving to the cities, moving to the seaboard. And I think something can be lost in that. And I think that's something useful that, that foreigners can do by settling in central Portugal, settling in the countryside, having a country pad um, and changing that a little bit and helping preserve life. Uh, outside those, what, 31, just the 31 municipalities. Isn't that amazing? So the first results of Portugal's recent census show the country's population continues to shrink with only Lisbon and the Algarve going in the opposite direction. Since the census, the country has lost over 200,000 citizens with the current population uh, lower than it was even in 2001. So it's 10 million, uh, 300,000 odd. Uh, but there are some areas where the population has grown. That'll be uh, Lisbon and Porto and Algarve, as you, as you would expect. And isn't it amazing? Just half of the country's population in those 31 municipalities. I yeah. do think that's a globalization thing. And I do hope that uh, Portuguese people will um, be able to move and live where they want rather than it being solely an economic thing. I mean, do you, do you see any change in that in the future? No, not really. I mean, it's interesting when you look at those figures, because obviously 2011, there was a big crisis in Europe with the Troika bailout. So a lot of that was when a lot of Portuguese left Portugal to look for work elsewhere so yeah. that kind of accounts for that dip I mean I think look I think I think there has to be so if you're if you're a young person um, there has to be some kind of like infrastructure and nightlife and fun things to do relatively near to where you live so you'll compromise on living in Lisbon if you can't afford it and you'll move to so so like, I come back to this quite a lot I think somewhere like Setúbal has a really big opportunity to become like another sort of big hub, but they need to have more investment or a big company decide to say, yeah, we're going to build a campus here. We're going to have like, you know, 100,000 employees or whatever. Um, so I think it just depends on, on on the individual. Then there'll be some people who are happy to live in a commune or live somewhere a lot more, a lot more remote. I think, you know, it just comes down to, I mean, it's the old, it's the old conversation, isn't it? But I mean, I can't see... I can't see it changing in the near future unless more affordable housing is is built. Yeah, uh, interesting stuff. And I, I, I think we do need a, a, a solution of this kind, really, because um, mm. this this is a global sort of economic phenomenon and part of the, uh, the, you know, just from a very personal point of view. I love, I love the Portuguese countryside and countryside way of life and central Portugal, and I, and I hope that that can not just wither away and become yeah, a historical yeah. thing. I hope I hope it becomes a remains a living part of the culture and we can reverse those trends. But you're right again, as usual there, uh, Michael, if I can find the story. Um, you're right about south of the water in Lisbon. Uh, the Lisbon's yeah. population currently uh, Nick, approaching 3 million in, in the metropolitan area. Um, yeah. That's up 50,000 from 2011. Um, and the highest increases came in Mafra, Palmela, Palmela South, of course, as you're saying, not far from Setubal, um, and Montijo as well. Yeah. So Montijo possibly being a bit of a hotspot south of the river there. So people are, I think, uh, maybe following your advice or your 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 maybe your... maybe maybe. I mean, it has it has improved a lot that area. There's there's a lot more infrastructure uh, and a lot more. You know, you've obviously got the um, 
the the Vasco da Gama bridge, which yeah. is the longest bridge in Europe, and that's yeah. that's a lot quicker and a lot less traffic compared to I mean, Cinco de Abril. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because it's still it's still affordable compared to Lisbon. So um, a lot a lot of a lot of Portuguese have relocated. Yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. Like interesting yeah. stuff to track and see over time, and I think the immigrants can have uh, something to do with that. Talking of immigrants, tomorrow um, we, uh, Jessica's on the show, and she started an immigrant association in in Penella. Um, Jessica nice. Faraman will be joining me tomorrow. Thirty um, percent of the population, she thinks, is 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 foreign in Penella, and I, wow. I, to me, she's doing the right thing there in in bringing people together. And I think it's from the point of view of, you know, not being a cliquey expat thing, but what they can do in the area to, to help the area and sort of be responsible, yeah. responsible new residents. So I'm looking forward to talking to her tomorrow about that. Um, loads of comments and questions. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Sorry if we haven't got to yours just yet. Uh, Elra says, I share nothing with Spain. I says, <laughs> that was, I think that was the idea of having a, a Spanish and although well, that's, that's been shot out of the water now um, because it's a city and not a country, but that's yeah, uh, a yeah. little bit. Portuguese sentiment there sometimes. Uh, Palmela, uh, from Palmela to Pamela Smith in um, over there in Al Cabasa Bon dia to you, Pam. You wanted to say something, I think, didn't you, about the old rivalry there? Um, no, no, no. Just I was just going to say uh, that um, Portugal and Spain have 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 uh, spoken about sharing um, other sporting events before. So um, don't don't assume that that's not, not going to happen in other in other situations. And I have to say, um, as much as there is that rivalry, and I quite delight in it because it's it's quite funny watching it from a sort of uh, British point of view that the, the yeah. Portuguese and the Spanish have a little bit of a <laughs> a frisson. The opposite, yeah. the opposite is true as well. Some of the collaborations between Portugal and Spain are extraordinary. Spain is the biggest uh, investor in Portugal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and has all the you know all the big Spanish companies that are here. So yeah. Um, yeah uh it is what it is right i mean we have the same thing with the scots don't we so there's no difference of course we do and then there's no problems there uh, no. So, so, <laughs> what happened to your gmp mug it's funny it's like as though we here in portugal have a problem with the scots it's, it's funny isn't it these things these these ideas can come with you can't they and, and it, 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 i think it's hilarious how expats continue to closely watch and get upset about the stuff going on back home when it's really in many ways none of their business anymore but it's such a hard habit to give up isn't it yeah. um matthias is worried about my uh not drinking out of a gmp mug i'm worried also about me being spoiled by mrs m it's not a good look i don't think matthias if she brings in the wrong mug and i say why isn't it in my that would have been a scene wouldn't it that would have been awkward for everybody watching if i <laughs> If I'd got a bit of a diva and said, why isn't it in my Good Morning Portugal mug? Nothing wrong with the mug. Mug available from Etsy if you want one of those. Um, and maybe someone else can ask her to bring it in to me in my Good Morning Portugal mug because I'm not doing it. Um, the uh, Olympic legacy in China and Australia was not the purpose. Both countries' Olympic facilities are abandoned. There you yeah. go. <clears throat> That's the problem, isn't it? And, and it, it happened as well with the, with the World Cup in Japan and and yeah. South Korea in 2002. <clears throat> it's happened here in Portugal with 2004 Euros. So, uh, and you, you've got the, um, the ghost, the ghost stadium, very beautifully painted. I must do a nightmare paint job because in in yeah. the paint store of these of these stadia, there, there's like 50 different colours of paint on all, yeah. all these different panels. They must have been really hard to, to for painters to do. Um, and there they they stand on the on the horizon as you're coming into, or this one stands on on the edge of Aveiro. And it does look a bit ghostly, I have to say. So, yeah, fair play there, Andy uh, and, and Michael, what you're saying there. A great question from James now, and, and everyone can answer this. And, it, and I don't think we'll nail it once and for all as with some of these sort of uh, perennial questions. But what do you say is the, is the warmest uh, place in Portugal? The, the, the Algarve, without question. The Algarve. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Like, the, okay. further south, the further south you go in Portugal, the warmer it is, and, that, and that's the case throughout, throughout the whole year. I mean, if you're, if you're right on the coast, obviously it can get a bit – a bit windier sometimes but i would say i mean i just just from personal experience i mean i've been in the algarve in february and it's been like 20 degrees so i would yeah. say ch check it out on, on google because it will um it will show you average temperatures highs and lows per per location in portugal but i would say i would say the algarve is probably the second, second question part. i think the second question that goes with that is what is the warmest part of portugal if you don't want to live in the algarve 
um, which I which I hear as well. Um, probably which, central Portugal, probably the interior, right? That's where it gets really hot in the summer. Like in the in, in the summer for sure, but then you know, damp and cold in the winter. I think if you yeah. if you if you, if you, don't, if you don't want to be, as uh, some people are averse to their ideas more than the reality of the Algarve, um, you might look at um, going up into the Alentejo. Yeah, uh, but but in, in in the interior of the Alentejo, it's going to be cold and damp in the winter. So, yeah. great question, James. Lots thanking uh, you for your contribution. Thanks, James. Uh, what Silver Coast beaches are busy in August? They are, aren't they? I'm going to stay San Martino de Porto until September, I think. Uh, just two months, says Antonio F. Uh, ago, P Portugal and Spain presented yeah. their joint application yeah. to the Football World Championships of 2030. Okay, excellent. Um, and that will be, hopefully, um, part of the strategy, as well as the bazooka of funding that's hoped for from the EU. We've got to do some stuff in Portugal, really, um, to, 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 to cope with the pandemic effect and the economy. Um, it, just as Portugal was recovering, I think by most estimations, you know, after the last serious blow in Europe um, with, the, with the Troika and with the, the global financial collapse, the pandemic comes along. And I think we, we need some smart thinking, don't we, from, from not just the government, from everyone to celebrate yeah. what's great about Portugal and put it into a formula for the, for the country's long term and continued success and to celebrate all that's good about this country. Yeah. I, and I don't think there's enough of that conversation, honestly, Michael, at the moment. Do you? It's a bit focused yeah. on, the, on the here and now, which I think, is. I, I think I think they were they were on the right track before the pandemic. Um, there was there was a huge amount of uh, interest that suddenly increased in Portugal since sort of twenty fifteen onwards, and you know all of a sudden it started winning awards as like best you know, Lisbon being the best city to visit in three days and Porto and all these other places as well. So I think the exposure was there. But you're right. I think now the challenge is, OK, how do we get it back on track? How do we? So there has been some of that in terms of healthcare and, and crime and safety. And those are all issues that people are more concerned about now in a post-COVID world. So I think it's just a case of, um, of continuing that. But obviously, with the pandemic and the lockdowns and travel restrictions, it's been really difficult to, to maintain that. And, and people are distracted. They're more worried about, you know, not killing off too much of the population. So... I'm, I'm, I'm confident that that, that, that will return. I'm, I'm, I'm confident it will, when, when it can. Good to hear it. Uh, Garvo saying it's the algae of at the moment because of the algal bloom in the sea. I uh, wonder what's causing that. Uh, interesting. Uh, if there are any marine biologists tuned in this morning, let us know why yeah. it is the yeah. algae of at the moment. Uh, algarve again, waters are amazing in summer. Uh, there are that, quite... See that? Yeah, that's a very good point. And that is the one downside of Lisbon, Cascais in August, if you want to go to the beaches here, even though they are empty there is a reason for that it's because it's the atlantic and it is freezing yeah. cold compared <laughs> to the algarve which is still the atlantic but it's that part of the atlantic that's that meets the mediterranean as you get to the the western point of spain and it yeah. is obviously a lot warmer um so yeah that is something to bear in mind if you do fancy a dip in carcavelos or caparica or cascais beach be prepared it's going to be colder than you're used to but once you're in it's fine and it's warm i mean you know i think most most northern Europeans will be absolutely fine with it. Absolutely, uh, Paul says. Michael, they go. This is a uh, sorry. We have neglected. <laughs> the uh, they're turning north because they're trying to find the wonderful Algarve. Um, it's funny when we spoke to Nunu from from it, when he was in the Algarve celebrating his family holiday yesterday. He did say his favourite part was Jerez. He he very happily been on holiday um, in the yeah. mountains hills of the Jerez. Uh Paul Richards, so true, uh, says Andy. Those Portuguese sat navs aren't that reliable. Um, I don't. I, I've got. I think there's somebody trying to sell me uh, medical health insurance coming through right now. They phone me every time um, uh, uh, whilst I'm on the show. Uh, I'm sorted. I'm you should, sorted. You should, you should answer and say, "Look, I'm on. I'm on a program now. Can you call me back? Do you want to say hello? Can you or can you do me a good quote? Can you do everyone a yeah. good quote? I found yeah. no. I, I'm with Nunu now. I'm with Windsurance. Uh, I've won with Windsurance. I found out recently that Finns look for Portuguese shoes because they have very good grip, better than their own shoemakers. There you go. It surprised me that Portugal makes better grip uh, than an ice country. Fantastic. There you go. Uh, the Algarve depends on what you want. Egg and chips, transitory community, but it does have Prosecco, Peggy and Frank. Shoes are fine if you're a mini-me, but oversize 11, you'll have enough all choice. That's an interesting point. Yes, um, you will struggle if you are big-footed um, yeah. in Portugal, so you might still have to have them flown in from North America. And, or you know, if, you're, if you're if you're tall in general, I think. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, with, with, with the big clothes, yes, uh, we're the second biggest exporter because family house needs shoes to be replaced for their lost ammunition thrown by parents to aim at the kids. <laughs> wow, 
that's, wow, that's, that's the best comment I've ever seen on this show so far. Yes, that's so actually, that's amazing. The Portuguese is that, that's Joel. That's Joel who said that, right? Of course it is. Of course it is, because he's been at the receiving end of, of some of that ammunition growing up. Joel, you, you uh, nice the, one, the Portuguese shoe industry is kept alive by Portuguese corporal punishment. Domestic domestic corporal punishment. That's yeah, in, in, in Latin America, it's the chola that your, your mum will hit you with. <laughs> <laughs> it's the go-to... The go <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, yeah and uh, yes uh, for those who uh, we're not condoning any of this by the way but for those who prefer a belt leather belts are also made wow <laughs> oh and wooden spoons wooden spoons and as well spoons. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So you just tied it in mate that was the theme you just did it well done <laughs> <laughs> i think you could get a, you can get um a corporal punishment kit at the end yeah. of in, in, Portuguese, if, a portuguese corporate punishment kit. <laughs> yes and you know if you've grown up and you still like a bit of that Portugal's the place um, yeah. to, to get the kit, you know, if you're doing that as a, as a respectful and consenting adult. Uh, bon, bon, yeah, leather, wood. Uh, yeah, I, my mind is my mind is racing now. But anyway, could, yeah. let me contain myself. Um, back to Andrea Hogan. Bon dia. Good morning to you, Andrea. <laughs> look, look at this, Pete to Joel. There's a nice... Um, don't get offended by that, me old mucker. It doesn't mean anything bad. It's a term of affection in case yeah. that hasn't been used on you before. There's your... I think he's used to that sort of thing now. Um, okay. <laughs> suddenly, I, I, I roll the scroller on the mouse and suddenly hundreds more um new new comments are revealed to us in two minutes that we've got are you all right sticking around a bit a little bit longer yeah no worries mate we can go a bit longer it's fine so oh worry. my goodness this is is garfo having a senior moment as one i've just seen there oh my goodness um i think the comments should have their own show we need to cut and paste them yeah. somewhere yeah. else afterwards where they can yeah. live on um okay i hope a lot of this is just people saying hello to each other uh which i think it is jersey's here though we do need to say hi to jersey uh in new jersey uh simon jersey. as well a rare twitter viewer simon teacap laughing at something that's been said uh, as a foreigner says fisa uh what kind of businesses should one consider and look into as it is starting a business uh, what would you say there michael you're a good man to answer that question Whatever you're, whatever you're passionate about, and whatever you have ex some experience of, I would say, um, you know, if you if you if you've come from a if you've come from a um, a corporate business background, then maybe starting a restaurant could be could be uh, uh, you know a disaster. I mean, it, it depends. I, I'm just sort of I'm playing around a bit with you. I'd say uh, do do what you're passionate about and do good market research. So find if what your competition is going to be like in the area you plan to operate in and um, speak to a good accountant. But I mean, it's a very open-ended question. Feel free to get in contact with me if you want any advice about it. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And how do they do that? Uh, so that'll be my email address, which is michael at avonlight.com. All right, I'll stick that in the comments, uh, Michael, whilst you're, whilst you're answering another question. Another one for you, I think. Uh, bon dia, alegria, a todos de California. From which jewelry stores can one find top quality pearl necklaces, yeah. Michael? I mean, I would say in Lisbon, if you walk down Avenida Libertad, uh, assuming this isn't someone trolling me, I'm presuming it's not, then uh, you can find <laughs> you can find all sorts. <laughs> I think that's someone tro trolling me for sure. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, uh, you need to come here to Castella Franco and enjoy the beauty of Cardinia and Estrella. <laughs> Khadija, good morning to you uh, from Caminha. We have seen lots of folks up here vacationing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no! I was saying, I was just saying to Louisa yesterday. I haven't, I haven't had a, a blessing of the helmet moment for ages, which she <laughs> fortunately she didn't take the wrong way. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> okay. Um, oh, right. Um, uh, it's been it's been stressful lately. We just it's been difficult. difficult. Yeah, it's been a difficult day. <laughs> time. It's like one of those press conferences where we're, where two grown men are suddenly crying on the on the screen. <laughs> okay, Khadija, thank you. In our town of Sages, many of the houses stand empty most of the year, waiting for people to escape the heat. We're on the Rio Mino with Spain across the way from our window. Oh, view of Spain from the window, fantastic! I think we're all right now, Michael. I think thank well, you, good, Khadija. Well, good. I'm going to explore north of Lisboa. Lisboa, it's on my agenda. That's a Lisboeta comment, isn't it? I'm thinking of going north of Lisboa. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like people right. who say anywhere north of Watford is the north in England, right? 
Yes. You're a northerner. I was called a northerner when I went to university in London, and I'm from Norfolk, and our friend who was with us, and he's still with us, he's from Norfolk as well. Maybe he can relate to that. But, yes, for, 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 for Liz, where does anywhere north of Lisbon is the north, that for sure. Yeah. Or outside it, for that matter. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Guest accommodation is finished, everyone. Message from Casa Bleach. Uh, the guests are nice. the they're starting on the 15 by 5 pool this morning. Get to, get to know Peach. Uh, get to, uh, I've shortened his name to Peach. Pete Bleach, um, get get over there and get your name down for the guest accommodation there. Checking out Fundal. Uh, tomorrow, Jersey, uh, the, 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 the Portugal trip starts. Bon voyage, Amazing. Have a great trip, Jersey. Bon voyage. And let me know, uh, Jersey, the, the Portuguese kids. I love the comedy of the Portuguese kids. Do you relate to some of those characters, Jersey, if you've seen that? Um, I think it's hilarious. And, and that's for, for, that's a British person in Portugal looking at comedy that's originating from American New Jersey of Portuguese immigrants there. But the themes are, are, are really very marvellous. Uh, uh, Simon Teacup is in Karakovanosh as well this oh, morning. Um, yeah. uh, Great Yarmouth is the second largest. You Portuguese. You can, amazing, Mark. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, Michelle trying to figure out why I wrote, wrote neither of us know then, Michelle. So so um, no harm done there then by the sound of it. Uh, bon dia, says Olga. Good morning to you, Olga, from Cor Good morning, Olga. Wow, lovely. Um, in my case, Oliveira, the olive tree, we suspect our family was one of those Jewish cases that Michael referred to earlier on. Uh, there you Silva, go. Da Silva as well, um, I think, uh, with that origin. Yeah. Uh, can anyone recommend a place where we can get a COVID self-test? Uh, this is so uh, any Americans that have come into Portugal, where can Jersey do that? Um, Elra, it is the same in the UK. Uh, Fitz means um, a certain kind of child of, <laughs> and the Welsh are just called by the first name. Um, I think I think it might, might be some connection there, Pete. Uh, yeah. Main squeeze is Robert. Ha ha. <laughs> What's that? Is, she, is, she, is that no. the wrong? Is she, is she confused her WhatsApp? I, I think she might have. I think she might have. But we'd love to know who Robert is and if he is indeed the main squeeze or not. So please sure. tell us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great advice. Thanks. I mean, that's going back a bit, but that's to you, I'm sure, Michael. Apparently, our Portuguese told, uh, teacher told us the dialect around here is regarded as traditional Portuguese. So there you go, in Alvazara, central Portugal, traditional Portuguese. I would have thought it'd be Alentejo, but there you go. Class variants. Oh, yeah, says Joe. Uh, well, those have, that have higher education tend to be more snobs. Yeah, that's true. That is yeah. true. Yeah, that is true. Doctors or lawyers, they forget that goes away in the funeral. Oh, a slight bit of bitterness there, but you can also see it when you're in Coimbra or, or certain parts of Caldash. There is a certain sleekness about the academic class as well. They tend to, you know, the, how they dress, how they well, operate. That's the same everywhere, isn't it? I mean, you know. So is. It so is. The way it is, the way it works. Uh, was Garvo having a senior moment? <laughs> we don't know. Um, okay. Uh, I don't advise, says Joel, to leave your personal belongings out in the big cities. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you've got to be sensible about that. But I have noticed yeah. it, Joel. It's very different. I dropped my wallet in a restaurant and a kindly gent came after to give it to me. A genuine Portuguese moment. How lovely. Um, yeah, I found a, a five euros the other day. It just blew across the the um the in the wind in a cafe or outside a cafe and there are only two other people there. it had to be theirs it wasn't mine and um you know, you know just that, that to me it, that's how what portuguese would do be portuguese about it can anyone tell me if you can just turn up at the vfs center for your d7 visa says patricia i'm having trouble getting an appointment via their website it says dates are free but when you try to book it says all appointments are already scheduled i think you'd have to hear from someone who's done done that successfully patricia yeah. no michael or i would have vfs Center. Well, presu presumably right. she means the US because I think for the D7 you have to apply for it from your embassy locally yeah. before you come yeah. in. So she must be referring to somewhere in the US. I presume. That's so right. If anyone that, from the US can help, can help Patricia, that'd be great. And but if you're desperate, it's worth a try, isn't it? If it's not too far away, and I'm hearing that DC has as uh, perhaps uh, one of the more lenient uh, approaches. But I mean that could be nice. a, uh, thousands okay, of. Uh, Jessica Springsteen's horse knocked a rung off. More an update there. Portugal, thank you, uh, Victoria. Thank you, Pamela, for the Portuguese Olympic update. Portugal yeah. currently has two bronze medals and one silver medal. Oh, I think that's yeah. what James was talking about before. Possibly boxing, right? Uh, that still happens, but the, sil the silver was the triple jump. The silver was the trip. Uh, Patricia Mamona was the triple Excellent. jump. Silver. Uh, yeah. Well said. Well said. Uh, we leave nothing in the car in Lisboa, uh, as the windows would likely get smashed in. Oh, okay. So there's another view of it. Uh, conversely, I was at the Obidosh Lagoon yesterday afternoon. I didn't lock my car or put my windows up. I just le left it all open. I love being able to do that. And I'm not yeah. going to give up 
registration number. Can you order online and get groceries, household goods delivered without going to the store? Does it depend on Absolutely where you Absolutely, you can. Yeah, you've yeah. got loads of apps. Globo is a good one. Um, so yeah, you can do that, or you can you can create an account with a supermarket, just like you can in other countries, and they'll deliver it. So yeah, absolutely, you can. Perfect. Um, yeah, and Andy helping out there as well as Joe. Uh, yeah. Groceries delivered in Lisbon from Continent. Yeah. Those. I'm not sure about other areas. Um, so Brian, I hope that helps there. Um, yeah, Jumbo as well. Continent. Pingados. Yeah. Uh, uh, less as well. If anyone wants anything a bit more upmarket, a bit more upmarket, it's your caviar or gentleman's relish. That's the place exactly. To go. Thanks, thanks everyone. Um, says, says Bryony, they didn't even have beavers when I was a cub. Yeah, mm. and he's he's referring to the scout movement. It's not another euphemism from our jewel. <laughs> And we did no. very well. I, I think we did very well not to mention the jerk and the snatch events from the Olympics as well, don't you? From the weightlifting. Indeed. So well Indeed. done. Well done yeah. for keeping clear of that. A la bon dia. Good morning, Portugal. It's amazing. The further west you go in the Algarve, the more the beaches are deserted this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, Sa Sagadesh is my favourite part of the, the Algarve, and that's as west as you can get, and it's it's beautiful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Agree I with agree with that. Get insured as well, but that gives you an even better experience. Get insured. Well said. Uh, Michael had a an interest in beavers. <laughs> see, you can see it coming. It's like you can, you know, you can predict the, yeah. the level of maturity. It's fantastic. It's disappointingly low, isn't it? Um, <laughs> English breakfast wasn't yesterday's show that someone mentioned a place where they serve that. Mm. Well, yes, Espinal in central Portugal we know does a very good um, yeah. English breakfast but a bit far off the, off yeah, the I'm track not gonna, i'm not gonna get up at five in the morning just have breakfast but i might do i might do if someone wants to join uh, me i might do it yeah might call, do you, it. call yourself an englishman um yeah, yeah. surely the algarve is the place for you a nice pint of guinness on the side um in boxing yeah today do they both get the title i think after being punched in the ring both people deserve a prize uh there uh come round to my place michael and i'll cook you on you can check out torish vedras there's a lovely opportunity right fantastic um, we just recently found a passport in Denmark from a German guy. We looked online, found his mother, contacted her. She called him and met us to get his passport back. Isn't that lovely? Well done, Andrea Hogan. That's what we're, that's our community here. Um, some, sometimes a little immature, but always kindly and compassionate and going to a Samaritan lengths of that kind. I wouldn't bother with Australia. Oh, well, this is referring to great places to retire. She, Michelle's trying to get out. I once lost my purse in the toilets in the cafe in Victoria Station in Manchester. Called in next morning to ask if it had been handed in, and it still had the 40 quid or so in it. Yeah, fair play. I mean, yeah. we, we, we are perhaps over-egging the Portuguese custard yes. here. Yes. But, um, yeah, these, these outbreaks of compassion do, thank goodness, happen all over the world. They we do, just it's, it's especially true here. Um, yeah. Well... They won't let it lie. Beavers came later on from when we were kids. Okay, yeah, that's a perfectly acceptable comment yeah. there. Uh, what's the difference between an Australian and a pint of milk? I wonder if we can go there. Um, you might need to filter oh, that Yeah, I'm just reading it now. Okay, well, Pete said it, not me. Um, if you leave a pint of milk out in the sun for a day, at least it has a chance of developing a culture. <laughs> oh! Wow! Oh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Pete, please. We don't do that. We don't do that on this show. <laughs> no, we don't. We let Pete Bleach do it and face the critical yeah. himself. We are distancing ourselves from that rather uh, offensive and poor humour. Um, I believe that. I mean, but it reminds me of the other one, which I would never say. But I know some people have said, you know, on approaching Australia, do you have a, a criminal record? No, I didn't realise you still had one, um, or, or still needed one. I believe there are grounds for <laughs> people. Still needed one. Uh, there are grounds for people to uh, to house abandoned areas in Portugal, mostly the rural areas. Still need to find a website or something to confirm. So there are grants, that is. Grants to... Okay. Yeah. And yes, this the, the awareness of the need to regenerate Central, I think, is as being observed in the golden visa. 350,000 investment will get you a golden visa um, investing in the yeah. interior as well. Uh, yeah. Go on, says Pete. Egging us on. <laughs> Tell you Friday night. We did it. Not suitable for this show. Too late. Um, ten percent of the population. What was that referring to? I wonder. Uh, from um, oh, Jessica, you'll be joining me tomorrow. It was ten percent, not thirty percent. Oh, that the, were the, 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 from yeah, abroad. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to be. I don't. It's not like me to start fake news, is it? So I do apologise for that. I retract my thirty percent and offer you ten percent of the population of Panella, and we're looking forward to talking to you tomorrow about that, Jessica. Um, Michelle, we got culture, mate. Ha ha. You see, and that's what's great about the Aussies. Good enough sense of humour to take that on board. Uh, yeah, I'm just, sure, mate. 
I think the Aussies have got a few jokes about um, the Poms as well. I'm sure, sure they have. Yes, indeed. Uh, whinging Poms. That, uh, you know, in those two words, uh, I think lies the, the, some, the sentiment. Admitted it was an innuendo show, and we did go through. Uh, oh, we did, and the difficulty of saying uh, caught in an English accent. Okay, mm -hmm. Pete is getting very specialist there. I found out what Coima is when I looked. I logged onto the finances portal last night. Anyone who needs to know what Coima is, it's a fine, which I have paid. You might be glad to know. Oh, good um, to know. <laughs> yes, uh, don't mention. The okay, come on, stop it. It's, de it's degenerating now, everybody. I love the Porto obsession with the swearing. Um, anyone, that's maybe why, why you're so attracted to Porto, Michel. Anyone going to watch the Volta a Portugal starting today? What is that, Pam? What is that, Michael? No idea. Okay, she'll no. let us know. I'm sure. Oh, Volta well, yeah. de Portugal. oh yes, the tour is the tour of Portugal, the cycling. Yeah, that's then, what it is. There's yeah. another thing. There's another thing you wouldn't necessarily associate with Portugal. They love yeah. their cycling here, don't they? They love it. They yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. They do. They do. Uh, when I lived in Korea, they shut the. It's a beautiful, picturesque town with one of those wonderful plane tree avenues, and that was the starting point for the race. They shut the town down, and it was so exciting when you know the the group of cyclists came past the house. Um, happy times. Um, bon dia from uh, Jasper Man. I really need some help getting my visa to live in Portugal. I'm looking for D2, independent worker visa. Can you help? I can't personally. It's the business of EI Migrant, our uh, partners in that uh, department, Jasper. They do D2s. Give them a shout. Look in our business directory. Um, okay. Any small wave sheltered beaches in the. That's the. That was the question. Uh, and I was going to put you in touch with somebody who lives up in the north. We need to discover the San Martino de Porto of the north of Portugal, where there's a sheltered or scalloped bay away from the worst excesses of the Atlantic that you mentioned earlier on, Michael, right? Um, yeah. Yes, uh, the famous Seda Francesca exit escape, remembering the French invasions when the French stole everything they could and left during the night. Oh, it has taken a, a cultural turn for the worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. This has gone, this has gone down a rabbit hole now. <laughs> from a... I, I remind you, it's ask anything about Portugal, not ask anything about bitterness and resentment uh, exactly. from between exactly. countries. Uh, bon dia from a very warm Azorish. Donna, bon I need dia, to... Donna. Lovely Don... part of the world. Yeah, yeah good to speak to you, Donna. I, there's some people I want to put you in touch with if you if you would be so kind. Uh, thank you, Michael. Great info and clarified some points of uncertainty oh, for us. You're more than uh, welcome, Fiona. It's thank what you. Does, it's what he does when he comes here. Thank you, Fiona and Simon. Uh, when they had won the World Cup in the Olympics, uh, Brazil, they abandoned all... OK, um, and um, I'm not going to read. Uh, Pete is in a particular kind of mood this morning, but you can decipher that for yourself. Uh, meanwhile, here with the Euro Cup, the stadiums were repurposed back to the local clubs, says Joel. Uh, Raquel, uh, Carla, Michael, best guest ever. Look at you, Michael. Oh, thank you, Raquel. That's very kind. A bit too always, generous, I think. There's some great always, guests. Yeah, and we've had a little bit of a laugh this morning or a... Uh, should I say puerile giggle? It's been lovely. Always such a great conversation. Very interesting and informative. The wildlings' shoes are made in Portugal, sewn by hand with natural yeah. materials yeah. and very comfy yeah. and durable. So I tell you what, it. this is it, mate. This is what, and thank you for that, Raquel. This is it. This is what I was saying earlier: is that the the quality of 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 you know handmade uh, fabrics in Portugal is re is really really high. Yeah, uh, and, and very very good value. And there's a the thing, you know, someone was asking about starting a business here. Why not start a business that celebrates some of the manufacturing here? You know, Absolutely. The, the first choice for so many entrepreneurs is to go to China, isn't it? Get it mass yeah. produced in China, get the best price. You might find that you that it's going to be more expensive, but it might be better. It yeah. might be an amazing contribution to the Portuguese economy to work in conjunction with. Oh, thank you so much. Well, it's, it's it's oh, look at that. Another one. That's amazing service. Look at this. Yes, it is amazing service. Well said, Michael. Um, so yeah, think about that. Think about um, especially if you can use cork to make your product because cork is the Portuguese staple uh, uh, product. It really is. So um, yeah, if you can, we're if you can for use our cork. first a cork PC or tablet or mobile phone. It's probably been done. Actually. Jersey. Yeah. I wonder why water in the Atlantic coast of Portugal is so cold, and here on Long Island, Atlantic water is pretty warm. Yeah. Um, again, we need a marine biologist or meteorologist. Yeah. Uh, my boyfriend has big feet too. Lucky you, Elra. He usually buys uh, Camport brand. Usually he was able to find sizes for him. So Camport, there's a tip for you, you big-footed folk. Um, and I have to say, Michael, have you seen in Lidl recently the trainers are back? No. What is they, that? Uh, I, I think uh, maybe I'll show him on the show tomorrow. 
Lidl oh. do their own trainers, and I posted a photo of them because I thought it was hilarious that they come Wait, in. Are, the, they, are they really nice trainers, or do they just look like like Ronald McDonald, something Ronald McDonald would wear? They, they do. They well, uh, the 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 American friend of mine who said, "If you are ever in there again, buy them for me, and I'll pay you back fifteen euros." Yes, yeah. serious. And, and, yes, and they are very collectible in other parts of the world because of the color scheme of bright orange. Sorry, bright red, bright yellow, and bright blue. Um, and the, and I don't know if they're made in, I hope they are made in Portugal, but yeah. And I bought them in a size 11. I was looking at them. I mean, I got, I got dinky feet, I think, because of my Asian heritage. But these things are like barges, you know. And, and so you can you can get a size 11 little trainer if for the, okay. the, the big footed person. No, that's some quality niche information you're giving people there. That's that's, that's, why, people why, that's, why, that's why people, come, that. why people come to this yard. Yeah, I would have yeah. that has to do with the current. You probably comes from the south, while the Portuguese get it from the northern part. Yeah, there you go, uh, Matthias, something of a meteorologist, perhaps. Uh, blast that really has left me out in the cold, uh, says Capricorn 12. I was getting excited about the shoes, but I have size 13 feet. Wow. Um, get decent shoes as it is in the UK. I imagine the, the lid, size 13 little trainers, you would cut such a dash in those Capricorn 12. Yeah. Uh, I was about to order from Portugal. It's doable. It's doable. But, um, yeah, uh, I think the point has been made there. A little bit specialist. One of the best ways of positively impacting the economy in Portugal, says Gail, is to build on Portugal's high production. Again, another thing: bicycles. Yeah, yeah. The EU runs right. The EU one runs right along the coast, and yet is largely ignored. Many countries are putting millions of dollars into cycling tourism. Thirty-one percent increase on the Eurovelo in the last past year. We are missing millions of dollars in tourism, bike hotels, restaurants, bike shops, bike rental stores. Now, what I was going to say about all of this, these initiatives. Hey, oh, this is fantastic insight. I'm making a note of this right now. There is definitely uh, a yes, business opportunity. There is, but we can't just leave it to the governments, can we? Governments, no, no. governments run on a kind of diminishing circle of public money. No one, <laughs> fewer yeah. people are working. Though the tax revenue is going down, the the the, the politicians. I've got kind of half a clue with these things. I think a lot it's, of this... It's, it's improved, though, Carl. It's improved. I mean, I compare it to when I first moved in. You do see more cycling lanes, especially around central Lisbon, obviously parts of Lisbon, which are quite hilly, where it's very difficult to cycle without falling off. But Talking I mean, about around, around some parts of the city, it works very well. And um, even even down my area by Southern Ingo Zorana, we've got a we've got a cycle lane now. So... Um, Mate, I'm making a, I'm making I think a uh, Gail makes a very good point that, that there are other parts of the country. Which yeah, what I'm, what I'm saying is that the, this is what happens. If you, if you leave the whole cycle thing, in uh, innovation and uh, regeneration, you will get a cycle path going up a hill because the gov yeah. the money will come from Europe. The, the government will – they don't cycle necessarily, but they, they, uh, they administer and bureaucratize things. So you'll end up with cycle paths in crazy places. I think this sort of regeneration on a, on a, on a wider scale yeah. is going to be private sector stuff. It's going to be entrepreneurial. Yeah, I mean, there are there are some. There's a. I've been to a cycling like place in Sintra, which is very nice, and you go around this trail. So it, it does exist. It's just there's just not enough of it. That's so right. It, and, you, know, and I, you know, the big point I want to make is we can't wait for the government to do it. I no. think I. Th you know, the government will get involved if if you if you start these processes. I'm sure the government will want to come and step in and maybe take the credit for it, and that's fine. Yeah. But I think a lot of these initiatives may come from from immigrants and and people coming into the country who can see a bit of an opportunity and yeah. want to invest in the country. So I'm hoping that's how it's going to work. Uh, morning show, Carl. Morning, indeed, absolutely. Um, they are. Oh, that's where we. Yeah, that's where we started giggling. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's professional. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> Sorry, James. How is it that Carl is always a bit smutty? Um, public school, um, education, it's, it's, it's a perfect storm, isn't it? If, if you go to an all-boys school and you are British um, and you watch Benny Hill growing up, the, all the signs are there, aren't they, that you're yeah. going to be, you're going to have a certain kind of sense of humour. I'm not proud of it. I'm honestly yeah. not proud of it. I might get professional <laughs> But it's just it's just the way things are. And then when you get two when you get two of a similar disposition, like me and Michael here or Gary, and then someone asks a very innocent question, probably it yeah. just it, it just happens. So we we did we would like to apologise. And that wasn't so. an innocent question. There's no way that was an innocent question. It can't have been. It can't have been. Maybe it was. If it was, I apologise to whoever that was. But yeah, I think, I don't, I think, I think it was genuine. But you know, was it okay? Lee said soon this mended. I've just joined in, says Beverly Mayman. I hope it, our giggling fit didn't put you off. I don't, hope that wasn't, wasn't where you joined in. 
Uh, yeah. I just had surveyors around to do a home report for us to sell up and move to Portugal. Another step forward. Oh, well done, Beverly. I uh, need to say your laughter is infectious. Must catch it. Oh, good. OK, so it has its upsides as well. <laughs> Khadija, no, you cannot show up at VFS. Okay, keep checking the appointments. They stick them up a few weeks at a time. You can only use DC offices. You live in a certain region of the US. Thanks for get Khadija for Thank saving you, a lot. Of time. Yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Uh, bronze medals were judo and canoeing. Uh, mm. They don't get punched in the ring. Uh, they get punched in the face. <laughs> All right. Wow. I thought that was Beth left, left hanging there, didn't you, Michael? Yeah. I have a, I have a criminal record. It's Des O'Connor. Very good. That's the humour I'm talking about. Um, yeah. Of people of only of a certain age will understand that. Um, and, and suddenly, loads more comments of. Please, guys, I'm going to have to start. I'm going to put a comment limit on now. Um, it's, it's 20 past. Okay, uh, punched in the face, punched in the ring. Des O'Connor, yes, 300 immigrants out of 3K population in Panella. Thank you very much. Salgado Beach, uh, up the road from San Martín de Porto, is one of the most roughest and dangerous beaches yeah, I've ever seen, but very impressive. Yes, be very careful there. Yeah. I bought a Harris Tweed in Edinburgh that was tailored in Portugal. Isn't that great? Nice. Uh, it is challenging to find shoes in UK 44 for men and wide width shoes for women. Is it? Um, I think it can be. You know, you're talking about Portugal making shoes for the Portuguese, and they tend to be a smaller shoe. So you, you would have to probably buy online, Jeff, for something like that. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Little made in Bangladesh. Oh, you. Oh, thanks for that, uh, Andrew. That makes me feel really good about buying those. But it was for a friend, and that's what he's probably right. Unfortunately, but that's probably the fifteen euros. I wanted to say that to everyone in the shop. I'm just buying these for a friend. I thought, you know, people might think they were for me. Um, thanks for the <laughs> show. Time for dinner here. Gary Austin. Thanks, Michelle. Cristela Branco, Sasquatch has been cited. It's just Joel, isn't it, on holiday? Um, Nigel Henry. Oops, slept in. Question D7. How are SCF progressing? And if I go to Silvish, will I get progress and the driving license by the end of the year? Um, Nigel, that is far too big to unpack uh, with, with us 23 minutes over time. Um, send yeah. me a message. We do need to help you with that. Do set PM me. Uh, my BNB, ah, fly in the eye. Uh, <laughs> my BNB Central Portugal will be biker friendly and motorcycle friendly as, as well. Great. Uh, make friends with Matthias about that. Portuguese also love the motorcycle. They do, don't they? They do. Um, they do. I, I saw a, um, a moped gang going out on um, on Sunday. It was fantastic. A particular kind of sound, that, isn't it, on Sunday morning? Uh, my dog, there are bikers meetings in Goish and Algarve if you wish to check it out. Sounds perfect. Via Verde um, cycle paths are being talked about. Uh, well, okay. in time. First moving, then buying property. Uh, Goish will be very close uh, for Matthias there. People still want to talk about their shoe size. I think here as well. Uh, for shoe size, 44s. If it didn't happen, I would walk barefooted. So there, Joel says. He's a big Portuguese fella. Talk to Joel about where he gets his shoes from, perhaps. And SEF may be starting in September, reopening after holidays and whatever else is. Um, casting a bit of a, a shadow over SEF um, uh, uh, operations at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know about you, Michael, but I'm a little bit exhausted after all the laughing and giggling. and Yeah, it was emotional as always. It was a pleasure. It's a roller coaster ride, isn't it, this morning? Yeah. Um, thank you so much, my friend. Great to see you. Thanks, mate. And thanks, everyone, for watching as always. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all again on the first Wednesday in September. Absolutely brilliant. Jessica will be joining us tomorrow to talk about that 10% uh, immigrant population and what you can do, you know, how, can, how you can organise yourselves and how you can be of, of benefit and bonus to the local community, which they're doing in the wonderful town of Panella. Actually, it's another selling point for Panella, as if it needed any more. Great place. Great part of the country. Lovely, lovely place. Uh, well done, guys. Thank you. We got through it, Michael. Um, and it's only left for me to play the end sequence, which I neglected to do um, in, in my um, uh, roller, roller coaster ride of Monday. It's a bit emotional at the moment. Maybe there's something in the stars. I'll talk to Mrs. M about that. Let's roll that VT, mate. Have a great day. Love to the family. Ciao. Have a great day, guys. See you later.